Hey everyone, I'm Blair. I'm gonna talk a little bit about Abbey Road 2 today, uh, Spitfire's iconic strings. I wrote a piece of music uh, this week uh, called Lily's Waltz um, that I highly encourage you to, to check out. If you're watching this, listen to that first so you kind of have a frame of reference for, for what I'm talking about. Let me play just a little excerpt of this for you uh, so that you get an idea of what the library sounds like, what my mock-up sounds like, and then we can kind of dive into what are some pros and cons of the library. All right, so that gives you a little bit of an idea. Um, if you want to hear the rest of the mock-up, I'm putting the link down below. So let me just talk about what I think works really well about this library uh, and what I don't. Uh, one of the first things I just want to mention is sound quality. Obviously, if you if you have Abbey Road 1 or, honestly, if you're familiar with Abbey Road at all, um, you know that that you know the sound quality of the space is what's legendary about it. And Spitfire is definitely kind of capitalizing on that, uh, and it it works. I mean, there's there's trade offs um, in I I think how they're how they're affording enough time to spend in the studio in order to get that great sound quality. Um, but as a library in general, this sounds great. And let me let me highlight some of these string parts for y'all. So to my ears, that sounds great. Um, the The string sounds are are nice and bowy. Um, they've they've got great grit and attack to them. Uh, not much uh, EQing needed to be done after the fact. This is what my EQ looks like on on most of the strings. I've just taken out a little bit of three and four hundred, um, or about three. What is it? Three thirty two here. And, uh, and just that little dip, I found that the mids were just a little bit exaggerated, and I just brought those down a little bit for this particular piece. Um, and to my ears, the sound quality is great. It's kind of everything that you'd expect from, from Abbey Road. Now, that kind of comes with a trade-off, and I think that trade-off generally is there's not a lot of dynamics um, in the library. I think um, in the... In the uh, legato patches, I hear three dynamics. There's one. There's two. There's three. All right, so you can hear those three separate dynamic layers. Three dynamic layers for a library is is fine. When you're recording in a place like Abbey Road and it's really expensive and you're using just the best musicians in the best place, um, what don't you have a lot of? Time. And so what they're relying on is is just sort of a, a small amount of dynamic layers in their patches and then some EQ tricks um, to make it sound like a performance. So that being said, does the library suffer? Yes, but also what you get from sound quality is is pretty incredible to me. Second thing is uh, is Spitfire Library pros and cons. Um, the first thing is I found the library to be just buggy as crap, um, and it some of these issues ha are things that a lot of people are experiencing. Some of them are just me. Um, one of the issues that I'm experiencing is that when I open a project that has any of these plugins in them, um, it's taking 15 or 20 minutes for the for the samples to actually load and to get a consistent performance out of them, and sometimes even longer. Um, and that is literally, I have to like smash down on the keys <laughs> of my keyboard to get all of the samples to load, uh, which is which is no fun. Um, 
also, it does fine with CPU and memory on, on my Mac. I have a Mac M1 Mini. Um, but on, on my PC that I use as a server computer, the, the Spitfire uh, player, it just it tanks uh, memory and CPU usage. I'm trying to finagle it and see what I can do to get it to work, but it's, it's not the best. Um, and then the other thing that I just want to show you right here is the is how I like to set up things. And the Spitfire player is actually really great with this. So I'm going to open up um, my Violin 1 patch right here um, and just show you how I like to organize my, my shorts. <laughs> now, let me play a little bit for you. So you can see in that section that I've got some kind of articulation stuff going on. Um, how I prefer to organize this is actually similar to how East West um, organizes their uh, their brass shorts, basically. Um, where if you look in here, I have all of my articulations mapped to CC number one, and so pizzicato is CC number one uh, in between zero and twenty, and you can see that here. On, that I have this mapped to zero, which means pizzicato plays. Now, when I start mapping this up to 127, you can see the brushed articulation plays. Um, and that's how I prefer to map this. Um, there are some players that don't really let you do that. And, uh, and Spitfire does, and I really like to organize my stuff like that. Um, so there is flexibility within the player. Uh, third, uh, performance pros and cons. Now, the pros for me are, uh, I'm not really writing the faders in this library to, to make a performance. The, the performance is slightly baked in. Let me show you what I mean by that. So I needed a lot of dynamics on this on this melody that the violin two is playing in kind of the B section. And in it, you'll see that I'm not doing a lot of fader writing. Um, I'm, not, I'm not doing CC1 and, and you know, going dynamics up, up and down. And with, with three you know, dy dynamic layers, it, I, it doesn't really do all that much. Um, but what the players are doing is in these long notes that they're that they're playing, they're kind of baking in a performance. And in a lot of ways that that works. Let me play this little section for you and you'll see I've got almost no dynamics going. This is not what I would suggest to do for 95% of cases, uh, but it works here. Now you can hear this section sounds a little bit a little bit robotic, but when you listen to it in context, you really can't pick it out at all, and you need the extra volume. And especially on that last note, you can hear the performance kind of baked in. And it's beautiful. I mean, it sounds great. It sounds really great. So those are kind of the good things, the cons about the performances. Um, it's difficult to get the exact sound you want. This really isn't like a classically based library where it's like a Joshua Bell violin where you can control the, you know, the vibrato or, um, or you know, even on most Spitfire libraries where you can control the vibrato pretty intensely. Um, this is... It's really set. The performance is set. Um, and there are some good aspects about that. And then there are some times when it's like, I really want a lot more emotion from, <laughs> from what I'm hearing. Like this little section right here.
And I mean, does that sound okay? Yeah, but I think without... If a real player was playing that, they'd really lean into that line and maybe some very intense vibrato. Um, and with only three dynamic layers, you know, they're probably doing, they're probably doing like piano, mezzo forte, and forte. And I think a, um, you know, a a great player would lean into that really heavily um, in a way that this library maybe just can't. And so there are definitely some some upper limitations. Um, as far as getting that that sound, um, and then the other thing is <laughs> is violin one. Like, if you've ever had a great solo violin, um, like Joshua Bell or something like that, uh, or performance samples like Solos of the Sea, um, this violin one is not really a solo violin. Let me let me kind of give you an example here. <laughs> So, again, there are good aspects about that, and there are kind of bad aspects about that. I think for me, the the good aspects of that is that there's some there's some realism there, um, but there isn't the agility that you really want from a great solo violin, which I think leads me to the conclusion that this library is not meant to be a bunch of solo instruments, even though you can kind of finagle it into doing that. Um, what it's meant to be is it's an ensemble. Like it's it's a really great sounding small string ensemble that you know when it sounds best is you know during sections like this that I was just showing you. And uh, and when they play, um, when they play as a group, when they play together, it sounds to my ears really fantastic. When <laughs> when any one of them starts to like poke out and ooh solo, it it really starts to break the the realism for me. Um, just some general thoughts about the library. Um, the repeat samples are kind of weird. See if I can find a repeating note in here to kind of show you what I'm talking about. There's really not a repeating sample. So I'll give you an example right here. So listen to this. So there's no there's no bow change articulation or, uh, you know, I guess sample that it puts in with the legato. So if you have two repeating notes right next to each other, it just doesn't really work. Um, you can give a little space like this. That works. I'd probably do this. It's a, maybe a little bit more realism. It's not a lot, honestly. Um, another thing, um, <laughs> this is just my personal opinion. Uh, I really dislike that Spitfire has has throttled uh, Portamento out of the core version. Um, so this is the core version that I'm using. Um, there's core, which is like like 40 gigabytes, um, which is which is great. It works great, sounds great. Um, and then there's professional, which is like 260 gigabytes of information. Um, and the and in my personal opinion, the only real useful difference between the two of those is is the Portamento sample, um, and being able to get the slide in between notes that really adds quite a bit to realism. I've gotten by okay here, but it would be so great. Da. you know little things like that just just having that extra touch of realism um honestly i think it's kind of a jerk move <laughs> I, think, I appreciate the guys at spitfire a lot they do they do such great great work but i think just kind of like throttling the performance down of the core version it it makes sense but i think they either need to have either for the professional version need to have a way that i can download only 60 gigabytes of samples and not the full 260 um or put portamento into the core library i mean it's literally just throttling you down so that you can so that you have to buy professional at some point which i will and so you know congrats to them because they they're going to get me to do that <laughs> so um 
that's uh, basically everything that I have to say. Um, I hope you I hope you liked the review. Definitely go take a listen to the piece of music. Um, I had a great time writing it. And uh, you know, if you have any questions about the library or any thoughts or honestly any any suggestions for future libraries that you'd like to hear about, um, if I talked way too much and didn't let you listen to enough music, uh, then let me know. Um, but if you do want to listen to a, a you know piece of music that this sample library did, you know, go take a listen to that other piece that I just did. All right, guys, be well. Thank you.